Podcast. My really mad. Or at least as mad as they say I am. The idea still seems quite foreign to me, as I feel that I am very much sane. My actions, however, suggest otherwise. Well, they do a tad more than merely suggest. They scream it. As loud and as proud as they possibly can. So loud that I actually believe the screams. For a certain period of time, anyway. My actions, too deviously hideous for me to relive, in any sort of detail, were not ones of blind insanity, as many seem to believe, or wish to believe. The terrible deeds I took part in were deeds of curiosity. It was not barbaric cruelty which fueled my motives. It was not some sort of sexual satisfaction that I looked for. It was neither a sick sense of humor nor a craving for blood that shoveled the coal into my will's metaphorical furnace. It was simple curiosity which kept me going. I had the gall to ask myself, as I'm sure many of us do from time to time, what if? The only difference is that I found the answers to those nagging questions that were eating away at me. You must believe me, dear reader, when I say that I am not insane. No matter what my actions say to you, I am not insane. I simply had the raw courage that is essential to answer the questions I had. The questions I asked, which I'm sure you're becoming tired of hearing about, dear reader, were not insensitive and ignorant. They were not of evil intent, nor were they of good intent. They were out of pure curiosity. Curiosity of how the world would react to certain actions, if they were to react at all. So in order to discover the solution of my undying imperatives, I had to carry out these actions. And so I did. And sometimes the world reacted the way I expected. Scared, confused, shocked, disgusted. But to my delight, some reactions surprised me. Such reactions included sympathy and concern. The former reactions were more painful, of course. But it was always a nice change of pace to see a reaction that was different from the crowd. It restored my faith in a way. My action screams have become louder and louder, and my voice is becoming softer and softer. When people look at me, they only see a shell of a man, a rotting corpse which just kept on living. But when I look at myself, I see a perfectly sane and mortal man. Not a perfect man, not by any means. But I certainly do not see the eyes of a madman staring back at me from the dusty mirror. The screams portray me as a monster. They spew slanderous claims, claims I do not wish to repeat. I do not define myself by my actions. You should neither. I define myself by what I am, and by what I am alone. And that is an extremely curious man. <laughs> it's not the fear of the creeping panic disorder that can show up at any time, that really terrifies me. Nor is it the self-destructiveness or the aftermath that is my scars that I truly worry about. No. What I truly fear, what I truly worry about, is the combination of the eerie voices in my head. They're always there, at the back of my head, haunting my thoughts and dreams, terrorizing me to the extreme. And the OCD... The cursed rituals that have bent my will and forced me into a state of constant horror of what will happen if I do not succumb to these rituals. Also, the beast we know as paranoia, that's always tugged at my mind, always forcing my mind into a state of wonder 
into a thought pattern, like a cobweb of catastrophic thoughts of what will happen if I'm not obedient. But the worst of it all, the beast that I fear most, is myself. I am the host of these wicked thoughts and problems, and their companions' pressure, stress, and threats does not help. Will I win the battle and walk free, no longer bound to the restrictions of the medical depression killers and awful thoughts? Or will I lose the battle and wind up at the psychiatric wards for three days and nights and be a prisoner in the open world, bound to forever stay this way, slowly rotting away the little positive things that I still have left in my life? Tell me, please, is it my fault that I bring this on myself? Is there an escape? Or is it all just bad luck? that I, of all people, was cursed with this. <laughs> I, I'm not crazy. I'm not... If I was, I, I wouldn't be there to warn you. I tell people, I see things, and, and, and they're here to get you. They wouldn't believe me, and now they're dead, bound in their rooms, in a noose, gripping around their necks. I've spoken to these things... What they did, you know, they, they told me things. Sacrifice enough mortals to feed our hunger. We are the past. But, uh, I, I, I shall be the first sacrifice. Gather the worthless and the damned to sacrifice themselves to the past. The, the first sacrifice shall come tonight. And every day, with no sacrifices, they... They shall rampage over the world, seeking all the mortals. But, but I'm not crazy. This is why I'm here warning you, but, but you gotta believe me. Don't, 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 don't look behind you. Hey you, Ghostpaw here, and I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you so much for watching tonight's video. I truly hope you enjoyed this glimpse of what insanity truly looks like. If you have any suggestions on what you'd like me to read next, please be sure to leave me a comment telling me what you'd like, or you can email me. You can find my email down in the description below. As always, if you liked tonight's video, be sure to hit that like button, share with your friends, leave me a comment, and be sure to subscribe so you can catch more of my spooky tales. And remember, Ghostpaw is always hunting, and it might just be hunting you.